my dear friends welcome all of you all dignitaries on the dais and audience so today uh, the topic is very interesting that clean city green city and we many time we heard that clean mumbai green mumbai any city you go nowadays and you will find the hoardings you know clean city green city some people talk smart city so before i uh, introduce my panelist on the dais uh, myself mala singh uh, i'm a green building and smart city expert and environmental scientist from iit roorkee and also green building accredited professional and uh, i'm also vice chair of mumbai chapter indian green building council i know how many of you know about indian green building council because it is a part of cii and uh, we are promoting green building movement across the country and uh, uh, before i take the questions from my audience because you people are working on the different different segments of the society you know in different different areas of environment uh, because when we talk about the environment so we are talking holistically you know each and every aspect right which talks about air pollution water pollution we talk about waste management in the city so greenery in the cities you know so so many issues we can discuss on this platform so uh, as i was just talking about uh, indian green building council it is our organization which is in uh, in india now and promoting green movement and starting from our journey from 2001 we started with one green building in the country and today we are doing 6 billion square feet construction footprint as a green building in the country so you can you can imagine the growth of i would say the mindset of the people is changing which is a good i would say the positive move and government is also participating with new green incentive policies and lot of you know things are coming up uh, with the way of smart city our pm has kept this vision you know for war so i would say now things are happening in a good way at least we have started to talk about this topic we are discussing on this platform environment agenda because i remember when i was doing my education in 1990 from for from durki iit and i took this concept you know particular subject for my study and people were laughing you know you know environment is just a subject of industrial pollution only so what you will do you know you can become a you know you can do physical chemistry organic chemistry or some what you are going to do so today i feel you know my decision was really really it was perfect it was the best decision i chose the environment subject that time because today it is the utmost i would say need of the hour we need to preach people we need to teach all stakeholders about the green living because when we say green living i'll tell you if you just look back you know our ancestors my my ghar mein you know my dada dadi my all ancestors they were green their living was green if you look into my forts you know like you go to uh, rajasthan you go to mp you look into hyderabad golconda fort or some of the forts you can see in uh, mp and rajasthan as well so you will see the kind of architecture we were using there itself it defines the green living sense because the kind of you know the courtyard architecture we were using the day lighting we were using the cross ventilation aspects in such a way the building were designed so we were you know just living without air conditioning that was a part of our living and similarly apart from the design aspect if you look into the materials they were using that time they were using local materials they were using natural stones and you see the technology and and there was not a engineers or you know the people expert people like us still they were using that sense you know responsibility sense was there similarly if you look into the other environmental aspects like water like energy like greenery so when we look into the water conservation if you look into the forts they were having a large pond you know rain water harvesting pond and in gaon in our villages we call it bavdi i am from himachal and we have still in my hometown you know we used to drink water of bavdis there are small small bavdis there those are natural bavdis because that is very pure and natural water so people were respecting you know the natural resources i would say from chanakya times all over king emperors all over dynasties ancient dynasties they were giving respect to the natural resources but what happened today that's the question today we are going to discuss because today our lifestyle has just you know the way we are 
exploiting the resources, the way we are, our population is increasing, the way our, you know, the children are also demanding the new technology, we are increasing the consumerism. So use of resources is just increasing the way it should not be actually. Because, you know, you must be thinking that when our grandparents, they were using this concept of 3R principle. Reduce, recycle and reuse. But today, we are mentoring, we are telling people, okay, use, you know, use green, go green. Now we have to use this terminology because people have forgot this. Now the time has come. If you look into the global warming and climate change issues also, the tragedies which are happening in Kerala and other cities, California, across the world, we are experiencing now the tragedies due to climate change, global warming. So still, I think there are a lot of, now these are the calls, warning calls to us. So we have to, green living, we need to bring it back to our, you know, the Sanskriti, we need to bring it to our culture. We need to, as a builder, as a developer of the society, we need to build green, and as a consumer, we need to live green. Then it will become a responsible society. So coming to the, uh, before I ask, start the questions from my panelists, uh, I think there was a news just before two days in the Times of India that in Mumbai city, the entire waste water, entire waste water which goes to the sea and pollute the sea, the 25% comes from the just slums encroachment. And 75% which goes to the sea, that is also going untreated. Because my dear friends, we have I think seven STPs in Mumbai city, seven sewage uh, treatment plant, and they are not working so well so that we can have good quality of water. Because there was some testing and some you know, monitoring was done and the water quality was found very bad. Yes, madam. So this is just before two days, you can check the Times of India newspaper, the all results of laboratory tests were there. So a lot of you know, now we need to awaken. We, there's a wake up call for all of us. The kind of air we are breathing, we think, okay, Delhi air pollution is there, but I'm safe in Mumbai. Next city can be Mumbai. So the problems are increasing, air pollution, water pollution, sea pollution, marine pollution. So these are the issues in front of us as a society, as an individual person. Now all of us work together, work collectively, and we need to look into this subject from micro level to macro level. Like, I mean to say from my home where I live, from my, from my side, from my home itself. It is not just saying that government is working on Swachh Bharat agenda, government is bringing this environmental policy and builder is following that compliance, blah, blah, like that. No, it will not work. Because all of us, as a part of the society, we need to look into all these environment issues from individual level. This is what my message to all of you today. And I think now, just to, I just uh, try to set up a, you know, that kind of, just a tone to the stage today is because we are discussing environment, we are discussing waste management, and we are also discussing green society. Because green society is a my subject, so I'll take in between. But before that, when we talk about the environment, and coming to the Mumbai city specifically, so I think I will start from uh, uh, both of you because you both are, uh, I'm meeting you first time, although I'm your moderator. So I would like to give you a mic and just to introduce yourself and your organization, what you guys are doing, and what is your, you know, the, I would say, the kind of challenges you face, and what are the progressive things you have done so that it can be an inspiration for all. So right. please. Thank you. Um, I'm Indra Neel, uh, that's Rabia. We um, are residents of Mahim. Uh, we moved to, just to give you a quick background, we moved to a sea-facing apartment last year, and we moved uh, close to the, uh, we, close to the, we moved close to the sea because we love the ocean and because we've got pets at home and we wanted to walk on the beach and we wanted to enjoy uh, all, the, all the luxuries of staying on the beach. But that, uh, but, but that, that, that wasn't the case is because when you looked out of the window and you moved during the rains, we just found a lots of garbage and a lot of plastic accumulated on the shores. And this is three and a half feet plastic, right? This is, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, if you ever go onto social media and Mahim Beach cleanup, um, 
you will see the whole journey from uh, over the last 15 and a half months. So just to come to the point, we've been cleaning Mahim Beach. Uh, Mahim Beach starts from Hinduja Hospital, goes up to Mahim Reti Bandar. That's a thousand meter stretch. We cover 500 me meters. Uh, we, uh, we clean every Saturday, Sunday between eight to 10. Uh, we do a simple process of going onto the beach and um, um, collecting all the garbage on the beach, collecting it, segregating the plastic from the sand. We're now trying to see how some of the plastic can go into recycling. Uh, our success, we've over the last 15 months been able to collect uh, 7 lakh kgs of garbage off the beach and now we've got a relevantly clear beach. Uh, uh, so we've been maintaining the stretch, we've been cleaning the stretch and also our success today is also because we've collaborated with the MCGM and the G North Ward and the commissioner there and he supported us with uh, with his efforts too and his team, uh, his team support. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think I'll give it to Rabia, Rabia, in case you want to add something. Um, yeah, uh, I just would like to know the kind of volunteers you say, how many volunteers are working? Um, so that's been the biggest challenge, uh, yeah. getting people to come and clean with us. Um, so on an average, we get about 10 to 15 volunteers. Um, there are the good days when we reach out to schools and colleges, we've got anywhere from 250 to 300 people come clean with us. Um, and um, the irony is that we get volunteers from far out suburbs, we'll get people coming from Andheri, even New Bombay, but uh, the local Mahim residents don't participate so much. And um, We've tried to reach out to them, but uh, they appreciate what we are doing, but they don't participate as much. Um, the challenges that we've faced also um, have been because Mahim Beach is located right next to the Mithi outlet. Um, so it's the first beach where all of the garbage that the Mithi carries gets accumulated. There is no filtration system at that outlet. So the 17 kilometer long river you know, it has a lot of slums and a lot of industrial outlets uh, on the banks of it. And I think a lot of them don't even have a waste management uh, system in place. So there's, there's, everything is just thrown into the river and it directly dumps all of that into the sea. And then from Mahim up to Prabha Devi, all of those beaches get this garbage. Um, so 90% of the garbage that gets accumulated on these shores is coming from Mithi. And about 10% or 15% is what is being thrown by, you know, uh, residents, residents on the shore. On the shore. Um, so what we've done is we, you know, and when we started, it was, the situation was so bad that in places there was like almost three feet of plastic. Uh, and there were layers of plastic embedded in the sand. So the first day, in fact, when we cleaned, it was a really small patch that we managed to clean. Um, and it took a lot of time. Uh, it, um, but it was extremely gratifying because you saw immediate results and the waters, you know, were flowed freely on the sand and it just was such a nice feeling and which is what made us go back again the next weekend and the weekend after. I'll tell you honestly, I'm not a morning person. I hate waking up early in the morning. But it was just that, you know, that made me get up every Saturday and Sunday and go do it. And also we couldn't escape it because we just saw it from our window. It was right there in front of us. Um, also, I think it made us conscious of our own consumption and how much plastic we were consuming in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I think before this, I've read a lot of articles, I've seen a lot of documentaries on pollution and environment, and I thought I was a conscious citizen. But when I came face to face with the problem is what made, changed my perspective. It made me realize that I start my morning every day with a plastic toothbrush, and, you know, the entire day, I use so much plastic, which I don't realize. Um, so I think that made yeah. us a little more conscious about how much we consume, how do we reduce that, um, how do we recycle it, um, and find solutions, uh, you know, uh, to that. Uh, you want to add yeah, something? I just, yeah. Sorry, Mala, I'm just going to take a minute just to add, saying that when we saw the garbage on the beach, I thought I was being the active citizen, and being an active citizen, I called the BMC helpline a couple of times, you know, yeah. and I got no response. There was a nice, there was, a, there, there was somebody on the other end taking my complaint and said that we will follow that up with action, but that never happened. And when we kept doing that, and when we didn't see result, we took 
action and matters in our own hand, right? We heard about Afros doing a great job at uh, Varsova. We took some inspiration from that. And, you know, I was more conscious, you know, I was thinking it's not my job to do, it's somebody else's job to do, why am I going to go clean? Because, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not my mess to clean, it's somebody else's garbage. And, um, and um, you know, also I was upset with the system, you know, you're frustrated with the system. But, uh, but you know, uh, Rabia said that, you know, we should just start going, we should just start doing it ourselves and see where that journey takes us. Yeah. I think uh, what I, you know, as I said, when you... Can I add to this? Sir, uh, you, you belong to the same organization, right? Yeah, chairman of our society. Uh, okay, just, just give the mic. No, no, it doesn't matter. I'm, okay, excuse me, I'm, I'm interrupting this one. They started this one only single-handed, both of them only. The work was started by both of them. I am the chairman of the society which is looking after that one. I told them this is a very Herculean task we are trying to do because for last 25 years I have been seeing that beach being cleaned up the people will come and just dump it again there and just show, make a show of it. But they have done a very commendable job. And what they started it one year before. Only two of them used to go every Saturday, Sunday. Then the people started joining. I have not still joined them. I told them, I'm sorry, at this age I can't do it because I have got a very steep back. I can't bend down and do that thing. You want to continue, continue it. I have seen them at a stretch sometimes helping the, uh, along with the help of a BMC, taking out 10 trucks in a day on that beach. And now what the beach is looking is, is far, far, far better. I told him that now I can die peacefully. This is my word actually. Because in last 25 years it has become a hell, I tell you. Everybody used to dump it and throw it, and the garbage which was there actually, the plastic which was there, I told them it is three feet down. You will have to dig it out and then take it out. And they are today morning also, they are working and they have come here for the lecture. Thank you so much and we really appreciate uh, this kind of community engagement, you know, programs. Where really it uh, makes a difference to the society. Uh, before I come to the Indrani, madam, uh, I'll just ask one quick question from you. Uh, because, you know, uh, when you said plastic waste, that was your major focus. And we know that plastic need to be uh, segregated and it need to be recycled in a very efficient manner. So I just wanted to know how did you ensure that once you collected it, then it was segregated properly and, you know, it uh, gone to the proper, you know, established vendor who's really, you know, uh, doing recycling and reusing that. So, yeah. So that, this is something that we are still working on. What's happening is that uh, we've been able to send not a lot of plastic to the recyclers yet because the BMC trucks were, are the only ones that are allowed to take the plastic from the beach or the garbage, yeah. uh, or the garbage from the beach. Um, and uh, so we've tried with Sampurna Earth. Uh, we've been able to give them about, I think, uh, 5,000 kilos of plastic, which they use for roadways. Okay. Um, because beach plastic is also the challenge is because it's got sand on it and it has True. chlorine. So regular recyclers don't like to collect it or take it from us. So we are trying to find solutions where either we are able to get a seawater pump placed on the beach so that a few cycles of cleaning it can happen there itself and then it gets dried and then we are able to segregate it because you can't segregate it and you know just with the sand and all of it because nobody's taking it from us. Um, like this morning itself, we took out all the milk packets separately and we washed them and uh, we, uh, one of our volunteers was taking them to the Radhiwala to uh, see if he can, he'll take them from okay. us. So the challenge has been because it is beach plastic and because there is smell and it's got sand on it and the seawater that their regular recyclers have not been very welcoming to take the plastic from us. Good. I hope uh, very but soon you will yeah, get, you know, yeah. more engagement with CSR and yeah. Some sort of, you know, the organizations can participate. Yeah, and because we just, yeah. Feel, yeah. we just don't feel that we've been able to achieve that, you know, uh, like a full circle yet because it's still going. That's what I asked and this and question because yeah. because the Mumbai is already facing, you know, the landfill. Uh, yeah, yeah. We are already struggling. Yeah, yeah. Where is the landfill available? Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's why the reduction principle is very important. So we actually yeah. met the um, you know uh, plastic uh, recyclers association in Dharavi. Yeah. And um, so they told us that if we are able to give it to them segregated, then they'll be able to take it from us because the plastic that comes to them is already segregated. Yeah. So we will we are trying to get we are not an NGO. So everything that has gone into this has been our money. Um, so we are trying to work with corporates if they can sponsor a seawater pump at the beach uh, or if we are able to rent a little space where you we can, can segregate the plastic and, and maybe if yeah, somebody can sponsor a pelletizing machine then we can do it right there. Yeah. But if not, then if they are able to sponsor a place where we can at least segregate, employ people to segregate it because we will need more hands to do it and then it can go to the... When we are feeling very hungry for lunch, you have been given a dose. And to talk about waste management with hungry stomach is, I don't think, the very best. However, um, it's a great delight to be back with the HSMS 2018. Last year also I was here. And last year I was a speaker on waste segregation, but more than that was the ALM concept of partnership working with the MCGM, which is unique to Mumbai. Many of you who may have visited uh, Delhi or would have known about it, of the Bhagidari system in, in Delhi, actually originated from Mumbai, which is the ALM. Uh, post our sessions, I will share some of the things that you will find useful. Um, my partner, the MCGM, is absent, but quite happily so, knowing full well that I will take it upon myself to act and talk to you of our partnership. So as we can, we work in partnership with all statutory authorities. But apart from we can, I got into um, all of this work, working in partnership on waste management with the local ward office, with the concept advanced locality management. And this was two decades ago. Uh, the whole concept is, when you talk about waste management, is not something which can be spoken about in a couple of minutes, that's for sure. Um, I'll just briefly mention, since this is a housing society forum, so let's stick to the housing society part, because um, waste management and housing society is intrinsically uh, connected, because the unique aspect of Mumbai, indeed of Maharashtra, is the concept of housing societies. That being the case, anything that we do in our daily lives is connected to our housing societies. Apart from the housing society, we also have what is called the chawl system. And of course, we have our famous slums. Either way, it is a community in incentives. It's a community working. So when we look at the housing societies and the chawls, we look at the ALM concept. That is the advanced locality management. It is a registration of partnership of the local neighborhood with your local municipal ward. And when you look at slums, which by the way exist just next to the housing societies, so we are all in it together. We are not exclusive. Each one of us are inclusive in our lives. So in the slums, which Mr. Dalvi actually specializes in, is the CBOs, the community-based organizations, as it is called, where waste management is concerned in the slums. Where beaches are concerned, because don't forget Mumbai, we are all an island, 
and all islands got stuck together and that's how Mumbai came about. Bombay came about and it's Mumbai. So beaches are an intrinsic part of our lives. Uh, Mahim Beach, I am really sad to hear, whilst you have done a commendable job, I am going to share some of the things you would have known about the famous Chopati Beach. Yes? yes? So if Chopati Beach can be what it is today, or not what it is today, it became way back in 2001, I can't understand why all beaches cannot be. And as citizens, one responsibility is certain that we have no business to litter our environment. That's the bottom line. Having said that, it's also important to get our systems working. Whilst it is commendable to support the system and to give our expertise to the system, there is no reason why we cannot ensure that the system works for us. So that is something which I won't take time because I really know we are constrained for time, but I will share with you the learnings from Chopati. I gave you my calling card because I'm in the committee. So that I will talk. Juhu Beach was based on Chopati. So I don't see why Mahim Beach, Dadar, Barsova, any one of them should not be regulated as Chopati has been. Okay, having said that, let's come back to waste management again. Waste management has got many segments. Bottom line is, every housing society is legally bound to ensure that their waste is managed. Now, when I say waste is managed, it doesn't mean that in situ composting is required immediately. Not all societies will be able to do that. Constraint of space, constraint of many other things could be the idea. But each one of us as citizens and as consumers of services have no excuse for not separating our waste. Now, every time we hear the word garbage, my garbage is not picked up. What we don't talk about is separated waste because each waste is actually gold. And I had been speaking on circular economy and I think that just boils down to circular economy. It's a huge subject. I won't go into all of that. What I will definitely say is each one of us can contribute in our own ways to ensure that first we separate our waste. Housing societies need to have some gumption. And I'm saying this with authority because my co-trustee is also the chairman of the society I live in. So when we look at a society, the first rules of separation of garbage, of waste, when it was in the form of garbage, was handled along with the ALM, with the MCGM, in a relay system of picking up the waste. Unfortunately, we find that people are unaware of many of these practices. So I think somewhere along, we will need to have dialogues. We need to have connections to each other. We have no need to have competition. But what we really need is coming together to ensure that we make sure that we don't duplicate our efforts. We learn from each other. And each of the society, of housing societies, need to get involved in waste management. Details can be found on our portal also, which um, can also be shared subsequently. But I would urge all of you to please visit the stall 6B. It's a fine example of how a civil society organization the election body, that's the Election Commission of India, and your own MCGM are all sitting together. VCAN is the Civil Society Partner of Election Commission and works closely with the MCGM. So if authorities can sit together, so can we. So I think from yeah. there, we can start to look at environment. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. Because uh, as you rightly said that, uh, as I said, 3R principle, reduce, recycle, reuse, it should be the, I would say, fundamental principle to manage the waste each and every housing society now. And I, I would say now it's happening because Rome was not built in a day. So people are just doing it because I have seen the... Yes, the yeah. Are also up yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's true, but it's things are happening now. So it's a, we should think, you know, the like in the glass, what is filled and empty. At least people are doing it. We have started to think about composting. As you said, the space is the constraint, but there are technologies available nowadays for composting also, which require less space. So things are in a very, you know, I would say some good things are also happening. 
and we should have you know the positive approach you know to move further so i think coming to the sadha sadhana madam right miss miss sadhana right because you know when we said uh, green city so okay fine waste management is the one component of environment water management is a one energy is the one is a part of environment but green space is a very very important thing because finally the trees the green or vegetative spaces gives us you know life because we breathe good air healthy air because of the vegetative uh, spaces or uh, i think uh, coming to the concrete jungle like our cities you know like let's mm -hmm. say example of mumbai and if you see the aerial view you know all you will see it is just a concrete jungle because there is you won't find any you know the green roof on the buildings or you won't find organic farming which is now again a new technology which is available and people are starting to use like vertical gardens and um, also the public spaces which is the need of the hour because bombay is uh, facing this challenge in big way so as you are dealing in this particular uh, you know i would say this is your expertise so i would like to share your uh, you know opinion regarding green spaces its challenges in mumbai and how we can progress and what the government policies all also can help us okay i would like to introduce myself i am from uh, soch sayani we are a citizens uh, social organization uh, formed by the residents of thakur village kandivli east uh, our uh, objective is to be proactive catalysts uh, to bring about change in the social economic and civic domain so as far as green uh, society is concerned uh what we have done is we have created a lot of awareness in the societies in uh, thakur village in and around our neighborhood uh what we have done is uh we have taken up uh, initiatives like um uh you know we have this taru tarane which is a project that we had taken up which is about green plantation in the entire of thakur village what we did is basically uh we planted about 60 trees okay we planted 60 trees and these plants were adopted by about by 58 residents now what happens is when a person is responsible when he himself is planting a plant it is like your own family member that particular member will take care of the plants for the next 5 years so we are creating awareness that you have to be responsible enough to grow more trees grow more uh, you know uh, have a green environment you know so that the air is clean the, pol uh, the pollution is so much yeah. that we really need so many trees yeah people are cutting down trees we need to grow trees yeah i think uh, this common message all of us are sitting here so we know that we save greens we talk about you know grow more plants and all that i think enough awareness is there the only uh, thing is that now uh, we need to execute our actions that is more important and it's not just right. growing but also preserving the existing one exactly and uh, that is also very important and when you plant the trees uh, maintaining them is also very very yes, important that's, it's yes, not that's just planting reason, only that's the reason we have yeah. you know uh, the residents who are planting the trees are going to be responsible and we have been putting uh, we're going to be putting name plates okay. so the person who has planted the tree okay. his name is there you know the bmc's uh, name is there whoever the corporator the name is there Good. and the description of the tree and what it would be look like you know after you know at every stage so that information and okay. there is a qr code on the name plate so anybody passing by can just you know punch in the qr code and see the information uh i think i would suggest you whenever you said that we put the names of the people on the tree or something better if you put the you know the plants name also oh that's going to be their there property yes, yes, you yes. know so that your children can be the also the entire description is going to yeah. be there on the plate yeah. so everybody is aware you just scan and you get to know what exactly is the tree when will it bear flowers when will it bear fruits all that is going to uh, be there right sadhana and uh, people like you you know starting from your home your community i think there are many people nowadays uh, we uh, see from the social media uh, you know there are a lot of unsung heroes in the society who have grown you know forest i would say in the 70 years of their life period they are just working on just planting the trees and created forest along the shore of godavari you know the a guy from the uh, assam you know he he has done this 
and and this uh, i just saw a story recently when a farmer uh, from a small village you know he whenever he, a daughter is born so in the in the name of there they plant a tree and she will maintain and and somebody get married also they will also plant the tree so things are like happening in a very good way now but i think the metro cities uh, we need to work a lot because villages already we have this culture planting trees respecting trees even i am from himachal even when we have a wedding or something we go to the you know we uh, worship the plant so this was a part of our culture as i said in the beginning now we need to just awaken up again you know so i'm just concluding the session because time is not there he's just behind me so <laughs> so when we said green city let me tell you there is a difference in the green city and smart city when we say smart city where we are talking about digitization technology metro city, metros uh, smart infrastructure and all that but when it, it is a green city that means each and every citizen who is staying in that city having the responsibility understand the responsibility to preserve and conserve environment as a part of not just saving mother nature but also keeping in the mind that he is saving his own children because generally we say a save mother earth i always say don't say save mother earth you have to save yourself because earth can stay without dinosaur she can stay without human species but we can't stay without mother earth because we don't have planet b so only this thing we need to keep in our mind and we need to progressively do our bit for the environment thank you this is the message thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. shrimati malasi yeah. and all our esteemed panelists